Nitrogen filled tyres are becoming more and more popular on road cars these days. Every day I drive around the street and see some tyres driving around with these little green caps on the end of the wheels. Now there are quite a few benefits that nitrogen fills are sold on. And I'm not going to argue that nitrogen isn't beneficial for your tyres, it is a better option. But what this video is more about is, is it the right choice for you and are you getting value for money for those nitrogen fills? To start off with, nitrogen is a great idea for race car tyres, and we'll go into why that's the case in just a bit. But for now, let's deal with how much nitrogen is better than air, and if that justifies the around about $30 per refill charge that some places around me are charging to fill up your tyres. Now the main reason that nitrogen promoters say you should fill with nitrogen are increased fuel efficiency, longer tyre life, increased safety, and improved wheel life. The first main reason that's used for the promotion of nitrogen tyres is better pressure retention. Now this provides benefits such as improved fuel economy because your tyres wouldn't be deflating as fast, better handling uh, because you're always at the correct inflation pressure, and less hassle of having to fill your tyres up. Now what nitrogen promoters say is that nitrogen is a larger molecule than O2, so therefore it leaks out of the tyres slowly. But is there any truth to that? Well, the site getnitrogen.org is a promoter of nitrogen filling, and they actually provide conveniently enough a paper on why nitrogen permeates the tyres slower than oxygen. Anyway, I'm not going to go into the details, but they already work out that oxygen passes through the tyres about three times faster than nitrogen. But when you think about it, regular air is actually 78% nitrogen. This means that only the 21% of oxygen in the air is actually diffusing at three times the rate and the remaining percentage of air is diffusing it at the same rate as pure nitrogen. So what does this mean in terms of numbers? Well theoretically anyway, according to the maths by the nitrogen promoters themselves, with the nitrogen filled tyre, pure nitrogen, you'll get 36 days in between dropping one psi, whereas from pure compressed air, you'll end up with just 30. So nitrogen tyres aren't as maintenance free as they'd like you to believe. Now this was backed up by a 2006 consumer reports study that found that nitrogen did produce pressure loss, but the average loss of air filled tyres was 3.5 psi from initial 30 psi settings, whereas nitrogen tyres lost an average of 2.2 psi, so about sort of two thirds or a little bit more of what the air filled tyres lost. So nitrogen doesn't stop your tyres from losing air, it just slows the rate. People who put nitrogen in their tyres and think they don't have to check it are very wrong and it is a good habit to check your tyre pressures regardless of what's in them. The next main risk to list is that nitrogen is dry. And the benefits that they mainly list from this are corrosion benefits and also pressure stability benefits. Now from the corrosion side, that doesn't really make much sense. Aluminium wheels don't really have a problem with water in the tyre. If you think about it, the outside of the wheel gets wet all the time, and you generally, on steel wheels and stuff like that, they're painted. So as long as the paint's not broken, you're not going to get any corrosion anyway. The real corrosive environment is outside the wheels, but your odds of having your inside wheel being destroyed from the water in your air are pretty minimal, especially when there's nothing inside the tyre to scratch a protective coating, whereas there's plenty of stuff outside. Now the pressure changes with heat is actually a valid point, and this is the reason why nitrogen is a good choice for a race car tyre. Water vapour dramatically changes how much air expands with temperature. This isn't too much of a problem on a road car because your road tyre temps don't actually change that much in use. They warm up a little bit, but you're not going to be getting your tyre to 80 plus degrees Celsius where you're really starting to see some very serious pressure effects. For a track car though, you're heating your tyre up much higher. And not just that, but in between cornering, straights, braking zones, your tyre temperature changes quite a lot. So you want a consistent pressure that you've tuned for, but the problem is that if you have water vapour in there, your pressure is going to be fluctuating all over the place. So nitrogen will offer superior performance there. Dry air will offer the same performance as nitrogen, but sometimes it's just more convenient to get nitrogen itself because you don't need an air dryer, you can just buy a bottle of nitrogen and then fill up your tires that way. So nitrogen, good for race cars because you maintain a more consistent pressure that you can tune for. Another point from the nitrogen crowd is that nitrogen does not oxidize tires. This here is a set of tires that is 120,000 kilometers old. So very old tires. These tires, I think they're about 20 years old when I pulled them off, got them running for a really long time. And you'll see that the rubber on them is starting to craze pretty badly and they're not looking so good. But 
How often are you realistically getting your road tires to that sort of lifespan? It's not happening. And this rubber is still alive at this lifespan. It's not completely dead. It's just close to the grave. So is oxidization really what's going to kill your tires or are you going to wear them out first? Now, as with the claims that are false, nitrogen doesn't give you any better handling. It doesn't magically give the tire more grip. So that can be struck off the record. It just holds the tire at a better pressure, which enables you to get better handling that way. If you're filling with air the correct way, you'll be fine. Same thing goes for better tread wear. If you're at the correct pressure with air, you'll be fine. It won't make your tire life any longer unless you're planning on keeping your tires for the next 40 years. And again, keep them inflated the right way. And it certainly doesn't maintain proper inflation three to four times longer. I think most places that claim that it's three to four times longer are just looking at the nitrogen versus oxygen permeability instead of nitrogen versus air permeability. So what are the key takeaways from today? Well, if you have a road car, you probably don't need a nitrogen fill. If that nitrogen fill is costing you 10 to 20 bucks per fill, you're never going to get back the advantages. If the nitrogen is free or you already have the nitrogen for some reason, then sure, go nuts, fill your tires up with that, it's gonna be better. But you should still be checking your tires pressures on a monthly basis and you should still be maintaining them correctly. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I've saved you a little bit of money on nitrogen filling your road tires. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to check out the other ones on my channel and subscribe and hit that like button below and hopefully see you next time.